I'm gonna start off from here today because it's finally spring in Melbourne and there's some sunshine out and that can only mean one thing. It's barbecue time. Depending on where you are in the world, if I say barbecue, you're probably picturing something very different. You're smelling something very different than what I'm thinking about. When I think of Filipino barbecue, two things come to mind, chicken and asao and pork barbecue, and that's what we're gonna do today. So it's officially spring here in Melbourne, which is amazing. I've been here for uh, almost seven months now. If you're new to the channel, then nothing's changed for you. If you've been here for a long time, then you realize how different my videos have been um, compared to last year, simply because I have to shoot everything myself now. Whereas usually we have a studio back home and we shoot with people. So it's a very different format. Um, so I'm gonna be shooting this way until the foreseeable future when and if I can move back to Manila at one point. Um, so one way I kind of get over my homesickness is by cooking Filipino food and that's why you've probably seen a lot of Filipino food on my feed lately. It's just because I miss the Philippines so much so I reconnect with my homeland through the food. Barbecue for me is a big one. I grew up eating barbecue. I think everyone who is Filipino uh, or even tourists that come into the Philippines when you go to the different beaches or even just the streets in Manila, you'll find lots of kind of like meats on stick, whether it's innards or chicken or pork um, and that just being grilled over some hot coals. It's absolutely delicious. It's usually like kind of sweet and salty and it's just so comforting. The other one that you know as a Filipino but people who are not Filipino might not know about is chicken and asal, which hails from Bacolod and it is for me kind of like that next step barbecue chicken. It's definitely my favorite barbecue chicken anywhere in the world and I think more people should know about it and should try to make it. So today I'm gonna show you how I do, listen very carefully here, how I do my version of a chicken and asal. Enjoy. We are going to start the day before. In a bowl, add in some salt with some ginger beer. Traditionally, Sprite or 7-Up is actually used, but I think the ginger flavor is actually pretty neat and brings a whole different dimension to the dish. To this, we're gonna add some rice wine vinegar. For our vegetables, chop up some white onions, lots of ginger, some thinly sliced lemongrass stalks, and some garlic. Grab your whole chicken legs and submerge them in the mix completely. So this goes into the fridge for at least 12 hours, but I would really recommend going for a full 24 hours. For our pork, start off with some crushed garlic, brown sugar, pineapple juice, soy sauce, black pepper, ketchup, and some lemon juice. Grab a pork shoulder, trim off the skin, and just cut these up in thin slices. All of this gets mixed into a marinade and stays in the fridge covered for 12 hours. For our chicken, we're gonna need some really good chicken oil. This is gonna be used both for basting the chicken and also to drizzle on our rice. In a skillet, add in some neutral oil like canola with some chicken skin. Cook this on medium heat until the skin gets really crispy and renders out most of its fat. We can then add in some aromatics, red onions, garlic, crushed lemongrass, and some red chilies. Let that cook together for five minutes before adding some annatto seeds and some salt. Turn off the fire completely and let this sit for an hour before straining. Make sure to separate the one that you're gonna use for basting and the one that you're gonna use as a condiment. Crush a lemongrass stalk and you can use this optionally as a brush. When you're ready to cook, grab some soaked bamboo skewers and get your chicken ready. Usually thick bamboo sticks are used, um, but I couldn't find them here. These are great because they actually don't burn as quickly as these little thin things, but oh well. Make sure to wipe off any of the marinade ingredients that might cling on to the chicken skin. For the pork, just start placing them on the skin and pass them through kind of like in an accordion shape. Keep the marinade as a basting sauce as well. Trust Melbourne to get cold all of a sudden, so I had to put a sweater on. Perfect time to heat up our fire. So I'm gonna use some lump wood charcoal here. It really helps to develop just such great smoky flavor. We don't wanna cook these on like a screaming, roaring fire, so just feed the barbecue as needed. 
Just slowly cook these until they're done. Depending on the thickness of your legs, this should take about seven minutes per side. So just baste them every minute or so. As this is oil, just be conscious that this will cause flare ups of fire. So just keep moving your chicken around. We don't want flame too early or too quickly. A little flame is actually really good just at the end to give us some extra char for those who really like kind of like that blackened charred skin. Same with our pork barbecue. We're gonna baste these every two minutes each time you turn them basically. And these will cook for about five to six accumulated minutes per side. Let's put all this together. Some steamed white rice, our chicken. Last little touch, I like to serve this with some crushed chilies mixed in with some black Chinese vinegar some chicken oil, and all of this is not complete without a chara for me. It's a Filipino style pickled green papaya that just brings such balance and acidity to the dish. If you guys wanna learn the recipe on how I make a chara, make sure to check out my next video. I will show you how to make three different types of acharas. Okay, so let's not forget about our pork. Okay, that was a long cooking day, and I smell like smoke, but this is my favorite time, and it's just to try it. So let's start with the pork barbecue, because that's what's in front of me. This is really the type of dish that just reminds you of home, um, because I miss the Philippines so much. That's why I've been cooking Filipino food so much. Some of the achara with the white rice. Such simple yet comforting flavors. I love the smokiness. I love the char that you get on the pork because of the sweetness that you have in the pork marinade. And it really just complements it beautifully. I try not to over sweeten. Sometimes I see people like the sauce that they put on the pork is really syrupy. I just like that perfect balance of sweet and salt. But now for the one I'm really excited for, our chicken in itself. So when I was taking a picture of this a while ago, you need to kind of drop that chicken oil on the rice before you eat it. It just makes a huge difference. And you could probably just eat the rice just with that. The rendering of that skin really gives that oil such a depth of flavor. And when you're cooking that with your chicken, you're basing it, it really will just kind of elevate the dish. Let's try the chicken, perfectly cooked. piece. I need a bigger piece. Tender, look at that. Tender, smoky, absolutely delicious. That sweetness from the marinade that we put in really comes through nicely. The lemongrass, the ginger, the garlic, all those flavors just pack it in. And talking about acidity, this dish for me would be nothing without a chata. Barbecue in general would be nothing without a chata. This is the type of food I could eat every day. Mm, so good. If you guys wanna learn how I make my achara, and I'm also gonna be doing an achara kimchi, like best collab ever, that will be on the next video, so make sure you catch that. Right now, I'm gonna just really enjoy devouring this chicken. <laughs> 